By the end of the Cold War, it is assumed the United States is no longer under threat of attack on home soil. So resources and funding to air defenses are cut. During the Cold War, we were able to get fighter planes up over every American city relatively quickly uh, because we anticipated Soviet bombers coming. After the fall of the Soviet Union, that air defense system was significantly reduced. On the morning of 9-11, the U.S. air defense on the eastern seaboard consists of just a handful of battle-ready jets. At 8.37 a.m., air traffic control reports the first hijacking. Hi, Boston Center, Team U. We have a, a problem here. We have a hijacked aircraft headed towards New York. Recordings of communications from Northeastern Air Defense Command, NEADS, reveal air traffic control immediately requests U.S. fighter jets to locate the plane and escort it to safety. This is Hutchers with an active air defense scramble for Clip 2526. But as 9-11 unfolds, it becomes clear the aging air defense systems aren't capable of effectively tracking the hijacked planes. The radar system was very much outdated and was not really turned to tracking internal uh, flights. NEADS is dependent on information being relayed from civilian aviation authorities. The Boston Center passed information to the FAA, the agency responsible for monitoring internal flights. Then they had to contact the NEADS base in Rome in New York State, which then tried to trace the plane. Then the hijacked aircraft disappear from its tracking system. One of the things that the hijackers did was to turn off the transponders. These were the uh, signaling devices used to track the position of those planes uh, by air traffic controllers, which meant these planes became ghosts.